welcome everybody to this uh, music mindfulness episode. I'm Kalani, your host, entertainer, and speaker. Hope you're well. This is going to be a relatively, relatively brief uh, talk and session today. I just did a uh, live Zoom interactive event with some of my music friends, music students and friends and colleagues, and uh, got me thinking about, as I often do, what can music teach us about the way we exist, the way we communicate, the way we are in the world? And I think one of the, one of the best lessons, there are so many, but one of the best lessons, I think, uh, that we can glean from music is the idea of um, not just listening. Listening is super important, but it's about conversations. And in today's in today's music interactive event, I um, I played a phrase, and then I left a space for other people to fill to play and have a dialogue. And that was, as I was told or informed uh, by some of the participants, one of the most satisfying parts of it. Um, and I think we can all relate to that, having a good conversation. What does that entail? So that's kind of the topic for today. What makes for a good conversation satisfying? And, and perhaps we'll touch on what leads to a dissatisfying conversation. But one of the things in music that we we engage in and we study and we immerse ourselves in is this idea of dialogue and communication, turn-taking, making space for other people, listening, uh, and incorporating the ideas, the music, the sensibilities, the feeling, um, the dynamics, you know, of, of others in that conversation. And to me, when you're out there in the world, I'll speak for myself, when I'm having a conversation with somebody else, those are the kinds of things I look for. Are we engaging in the same music here? Is What's the theme? And what is the to use some music terms, what's the texture? What's the feeling? What's the groove? <laughs> you know, what is the timbre or the quality? What's the, what are the sounds that we're making? What is the music of this conversation? That, you know, is a, there's a lot of range there. Is it business? Is it casual? Is it friends? Is it uh, intimate? Is it a negotiation? You know, et cetera, et cetera. But I think Within all of that, on, or in addition to all of that, one of the most important things is this idea of balance, of phrasing, and turn-taking. At least to me. So I want to leave you with just one main thought, um, with a couple sub, sub thoughts, sub sub considerations, and that is when you're engaging uh, someone or someone's engaging you in a conversation, let's be mindful of staying in the music, staying on track, staying within the subject, let's be mindful of considering you know, where the conversation is going and playing off of one another. I think that's so important. Have you ever been in a conversation where you just feel like you were talking about one thing and then all of a sudden your, your partner is talking about something else totally different? And that not only can that happen... And um, then it becomes like they're taking one really long solo, you know, and you're just listening. You're, you become a, a listener, uh, a, a audience member. Um, and, you know, maybe they're really enjoying themselves. <laughs> um, and they're not really aware. They're not being mindful that you're, you were or you, should, you probably would like to be having a conversation. You know, taking turns back and forth, interactive. Um, and this this is something I pay attention to a lot. 
and I'm sensitive to, and that's probably why I'm talking about it now. Uh, and, and certainly I can be guilty of doing that. I can be on both sides of that uh, interaction. So I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers. <laughs> I'm just saying that what we can learn from you know, music making, being a good music partner, we do a lot of the same things when we're a good um, communicator and just conversation partner and listener. So listening, sure, but not just listening. Having a meaningful engagement, you know, bouncing ideas off each other, incorporating the thoughts that, you know, what is the person talking about? And not just getting into a tangent uh, where essentially what would, could be happening is somebody's uh, telling a story, right? Remembering something that they were reminded of uh, in the conversation. Let's say there's a topic, a place, a thing, and something happened. And then one of the people is, is essentially telling a story, which in, an, in a conversation, which is really an improvisation, could be akin to now they're just performing a piece that they already know. Right? Does that make sense? So they're just performing this memory uh, music piece, and they're they're going they're going over everything that happened, and then I this happened, and then they said that, and I did this, and then we went over here, and then that happened, and then blah 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 blah, and they're reciting recital, right? They're reciting a piece, and then, and then the other person becomes an audience member, and um and that can be okay sometimes, but. When you start off having a conversation, the expectation is often that you want to um, you want to be in the music too. You want to make music together, and so uh, that's where we get the idea of phrasing um, in music making. And I think one of the things that really helps us with that is that there are cycles uh, in the piece that I just created for you, uh, which of course uh, was is based on. Um, uh, a uh, Roomba, um, and uh, there's there's four chords, and it's kind of a cycle, right? It takes up a certain amount of time, and it repeats. And so, in music, we get used to that. We get used to thinking in terms of these rhythmic cycles and harmonic cycles, and it helps us with phrasing. And then we can there's we can. It's easier to to measure. Literally, that's why they call them measures. Um, it's easy to measure how long we're we're taking because there's cycles there that we can we can know we can pay attention to, and so it gets us used to uh, speaking and then listening and speaking and listening and taking turns and having a back and forth. And I, that's one of the things I appreciate about my music training and having been in lots of different musical situations because I think it helps me be sensitive to the timing of the conversation and the phrasing of the conversation and the music and the theme and the texture and the, you know, the rhythm and all of the things that are very musical about a good conversation. All right. I hope that all makes sense. Uh, Chan Chan is the name of the song. I was waiting for it to come around in the lazy Susan of my mind. So has to come around to the front so I can remember. All right, so that's it. So when you're out there, when you're engaging people, uh, you know, remember to take a short turn when it's your turn and then offer, you know, space for others. And, uh, and also you might have to jump in and take your turn, take it back if somebody's holding on to it a little, a little too long. Um, that's all. I'm going to go back to playing. And I guess here I'm taking turns with myself, but I hope you appreciate the idea of the musicality of a conversation and what we can learn uh, as we exercise mindfulness, which is being in the moment. And I think music helps us do that so well because we're here, we're happening, it's happening now. Uh, and it can help us, you know, avoid getting into that recital, uh, performing, you know, a conversation uh, by just remembering things and telling stories when we really want to be in the moment, back and forth with somebody. And now I'm going to go back to the music, and you will go forth <laughs> into your day. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Appreciate you. <laughs>